All right, guys, so I think it's safe to say that when we send Americans overseas to represent our government and the people of this country, that we are, in fact, not sending our best. And this has nothing to do with anybody's gender, their sexuality, their race. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with their competence and the insane policies that they're trying to push on people in this country, specifically children again when we send government officials overseas uh we're not sending our best right for example we send uh president joe biden <laughs> overseas right uh yeah we're not sending our best the guy is an embarrassment because he's not mentally there okay he's asleep at the wheel the guy clearly belongs in a nursing home not the oval office and all the other world leaders can see it right everybody knows it okay when we send vice president kamala harris overseas we're not sending our best because she has the communication skills of a kindergarten right she's just awkward and she's always acting like she forgot her homework assignment right anytime she talks to anybody or does an interview or anything like that okay and most certainly when we send these two overseas uh we're definitely not sending our best because they actively are promoting policies in this country that are not grounded in reality okay especially on children okay and again you can't help but think that we are being embarrassed on the world stage and that we have become a laughing stock of the world because a country that used to represent strength now represents weakness and lunacy in the name of diversity and inclusion which <laughs> this right here is phase two it's the next step in diversity and inclusion okay uh it used to be about race now it's about uh gender and i'm not talking about women's rights right i think it's safe to say that the next phase in diversity and inclusion uh is probably antithetical to women's rights and biden's transgender assistant health secretary rachel levine is leading the fight against women's rights and the battleground and the fight against women's rights uh for them for these people starts with children okay and their mission to get children access to gender affirming health care aka uh transition kids by putting them on puberty blockers and hormone therapy treatments okay Th that is what they're trying to do in fact rachel levine went as far as to call for empowering and supporting youth with puberty blockers and hormone treatments in a recent interview on msnbc which should tell you everything you need to know about the biden administration and why we are an embarrassment on the world stage take a look i want to ask you also uh, about transgender americans because you're the first openly transgender official confirmed by the united states senate in a recent op-ed you urge people to base medical decisions and public statements on real data and compassion rather than slander. And you spoke to trans youth in Florida recently. Tell us what you told them. Well, you know, it, it, trans youth are, are vulnerable, um, and they suffer significant harassment and bullying, uh, sometimes at schools or in their community. They have more mental health issues, but there's nothing inherent with being transgender or gender diverse, which would predispose youth to depression or anxiety. It is that harassment and bullying. Now they're suffering politically motivated attacks through state uh, actions against these vulnerable transgender youth. This is not based up on data. This is these are these are, these actions are politically motivated, and so we really want to to to, to base our treatment and and, uh, and to uh, affirm and to uh, support and empower these youth, not to limit their participation in activities and sports, and even uh, uh, limit their ability to get gender affirmation treatment in their state. No, you chose Florida, of course, the home of the "Don't Say Gay" <laughs> bill, of course, which has been notably. Uh, restrictive. So that is correct. You know, it, it, the studies show from the Trevor Project that all it takes is one supportive adult to make all the difference for an LGBTQI plus youth, uh, transgender youth, in terms of their risk of depression and suicide. One supportive adult. That often is a teacher or some a school personnel, and the Don't Say Gay bill is very damaging to their health. Yeah, guys, so there you have it. <laughs> right, there you have it. I mean, this person is literally just saying exactly what we all believe is a priority of the Biden administration, what the Democrat Party wants to do. They want to support and empower youth, 
Okay, we're talking about kids, children to undergo gender reassignment surgeries, to undergo hormone treatments, to get puberty blockers. That's what they want to do. That's what they want to do. And they want to stop states from being able to stop children from undergoing these potentially permanent and life-changing procedures that they don't understand. They want to stop states from being able to do that, right? And they, they right, people like Tiffany Cross and Malcolm Nance and Elon Mustall, they ha have been proposing civil war because the Supreme Court and the judicial system is getting in the way of the Biden administration being able to force states to allow kids to undergo gender reassignment surgery. I want you to understand, this is what the left <laughs> allegedly wants to fight a war over. They want to fight a war, war, a war over allowing kids to take puberty blockers, to take hormone treatments, to get their body parts cut off, right? That, that's what they want, okay? And you're a bigot, right, if you say otherwise, according to them. And I'm sick and tired of hearing this same old, same old, same old talking points from these people who support this stuff and say, well, do you want these kids to commit suicide? If you don't support these children, if you don't push them to get their, you know, genitalia cut off and to take puberty blockers and hormone treatments, you must want them to kill themselves, right? I'm sick and tired of that talking point because this person wants to talk about the facts and the data. Well, the data shows that one, 80% of those that are experiencing gender dysphoria outgrow the condition they outgrow it you know ain't it amazing how children realize that hey what i believed when i was five six seven years old is not necessarily aligned with reality right like every child in america does okay uh ain't it amazing how that works also uh when people undergo these uh, gender reassignment surgeries when they become actually trans trans uh that doesn't reduce their risk of suicide either Okay, so again, you have no evidence that these treatments actually work for reducing suicide. However, they keep rolling out this talking point in order to try to fear monger and guilt people into pushing kids into these life changing procedures instead of just treating the issue for what it is. Right. A lot of these kids have depression. They have anxiety. They have some sort of condition, right, that they're dealing with that may be contributing to them wanting to be trans or having gender dysphoria okay but no no no. according to rachel levine it's not that right it's because they're being bullied right they're experiencing depression and anxiety because they're being bullied and i'm like bro we live in 2022 uh let's be honest all these kids in school are woke and being trans is the trendy thing right that's the cool thing to do in school so i'm not buying the talking point anymore that all these trans kids are being bullied in school okay and instead of listening to propagandists like Rachel Levine and the Biden administration on this issue of kids transitioning, what we actually be listening to are kids that are actually being pushed into transitioning and then turning around and regretting it. You know, people like Chloe Cole, who is a girl who transitioned into a boy and then decided that, you know what, um, I don't like this, okay, after starting um, testosterone, puberty blockers at 13, got a double mastectomy at 15 and decided at 16, eh, you know what? I, I don't want to do this, right? This ain't right. Okay. Uh, we actually need to listen to people like her because her testimony is extremely powerful and a prime reason why we should not be pushing this on kids. I don't know if I'll be able to fully carry a child. Um, and I might be at increased risk for certain cancers namely cervical cancer. And because I do not have my breasts, I, I no longer have breasts. I, I'm not able to breastfeed whatever future children I have. That realization actually was um, one of the biggest things that lead to me realizing that I, this was not the path that I should have taken. My name is Chloe Cole, and I am a 17-year-old detransitioner from the Central Valley. I was medically transitioned from ages 13 to 16. My parents took me to a therapist who affirmed my male identity, and the therapist did not care about causality or encouraged me to learn to be comfortable in my body. He brushed off my parents' concerns about the efficacy of hormones, puberty blockers, and surgeries. My parents were given a threat of suicide as a reason to move me forward in my transition. My endocrinologist, after two or three appointments, put me on puberty blockers and injectable testosterone. At age 15, I asked to remove my breasts. 
My therapist continued to affirm my transition. I attended a top surgery class that was filled with around 12 girls that thought were, they were men. Most were my age or younger. None of us were going to be men. We were fleeing from the uncomfortable feeling of becoming women. I was unknowingly physically cutting off my true self from my body, irreversibly and painfully. Our trans identities were not questioned. I went through with surgery. Despite having therapists and attending the top surgery class, I really didn't understand all of the ramifications of any of the medical decisions I was making. I wasn't capable of understanding, and it was downplayed consistently. My parents, on the other hand, were pressured to continue my so-called gender journey with a suicide threat. I will never be able to breastfeed a child. I have blood clots in my urine. I am unable to fully empty my bladder. I do not yet know if I am capable of carrying a child to full term. In fact, even the doctors who put me on puberty blockers and testosterone do not know. SB 107 is circumventing state's laws that have needed safeguards in place so my story is not repeated. Children cannot consent. Vote no on SB 107. Yeah, all decisions made at the age of 13, okay, that this person went on to later regret two or three years later after getting the breast cut off, after undergoing so much gender-affirming care that um, they have a number of health problems, okay? They don't know if they can carry a child, right? Again, um, Rachel Levine calls that support and empowerment, right? We must support and empower kids to be able to make them make decisions like that at 13 years old, okay? That they're going to regret three, four years uh, later, okay? I, I got a feeling that in the 2030s, we're going to have a whole lot of adults that are going to be asking the older generation, why did you let me make this decision as a kid? Why did you let me do this as a child? Okay, what was you thinking to think that I knew what I was thinking, right? Again, that's what they're going to be saying because of people like Rachel Levine and the type of policies and ideology that they're trying to push on children across this country, right? They're trying to weaponize the federal government to stop state governments that have some common sense from stopping these kids from making these permanent life-changing decisions. Again, it's a shame, right? And they, they say, that, hey, we may try to fight a war. Over it. We should have a civil war because we have a conservative uh, judicial system that is stopping the federal government from overreaching, right? From encroaching on states' rights, right? This is what they're saying. It's absolutely ridiculous. We're living in cuckoo for Cocoa Puff world, okay? And this is why we are embarrassment on the world stage. This is why we're an embarrassment, okay? America has lost a whole lot of respect, and this gender issue is one of the reasons why. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.